Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam question that deal with an investment and that investment is available for sale. It include accrued interest, it include bond investment amortization. So you have three different concepts going on at the same time that deals with a bond and we talk about the bond as well. So you have to understand actually four different things, how bonds work, how accrued interest work, how you amortize any discount or premium when you make an investment and it's an available for sale bond. Before I start, I would like to remind you, if you are studying for your CPA exam, to check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I do have supplemental material for your CPA exam or if you are taking your accounting courses. Now, I don't replace your Wiley, Glime, Roger, Becker, Sargent or any other course you are taking. My job is to supplement. I can be a very good addition to your CPA course where I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score. I don't short change you in the explanation. In other words, CPA prep courses, they assume you know you have a certain level of knowledge. I don't assume anything. I explain everything in details from scratch. If you're an accounting student, I do have accounting courses as well. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Subscribe to my YouTube. I always post videos and if you like them, please like them and share them. So you can help others as well as on Instagram and Facebook. So let's go ahead and start to dissect this problem that involve again many many aspects of uh, different concepts. So on November first, twenty fourteen, Adam Company purchased Maggie Inc. They purchased the Maggie bond. It's a ten year nine percent bond with a face value of six hundred thousand for five hundred and forty thousand. You want to make sure you understand everything in the first statement. We have an investor and an investee. An investor and purchase bonds, basically, made an investment. The investor is Adam Company. They purchased the bond. The bond has a face value of 600000 They purchased them for 540. dollars First of all, this bond is at a discount, and the discount is 60000 That's the first thing we know. And the date is important here. The date is November 1st. An additional 15000 was paid for the accrued interest. And be careful here how the information is given. Here you are told additional interest was paid. So it's not part of the 540000 Okay. The information could be given as rather than give you 540, they can say you paid 555, including 15,000 of interest. This is the same information here. They made in this question, I made it easy for you. You said you paid 540 for the bond and additional 15,000 for the accrued interest. Now, once you say you paid for the accrued interest, it means this bond was purchased in between interest payment. And let's see. Interest is payable semi-annually on January and July. Indeed, it was purchased between interest payment. So here's what you need to understand. This is the timeline. Interest for this bond is paid on January and July. This is when the interest is paid, July 1st. You purchased the bond, Adam purchased the bond in November 1st. When you purchase the bond, the buyer of the bond, Adam will have to pay the seller accrued interest. Now, Adam happens to pay the seller 15,000 of accrued interest. Okay. Now, is, is this the correct amount or not? We're going to find that out in a moment. But you have to understand that the buyer will pay that accrued interest. The bond mature on July 1st, 2021. This is important because we need to know how are we going to amortize the discount. Remember, we have $60,000 of discount. Adam uses the straight line method for amortization, ignoring income taxes. The amount reported in Adam's 2014 income statement as a result of the available for sale investment is how much? Simply put, Adam is going to receive interest from this bond. How much of that interest or how much interest revenue would Adam record on his income statement for the year ending 2014. That's the that's the question, and the answer are 10,500, 15,000, 18,000, or 27,000. How would you approach this problem? Well, first, let's compute. Let's compute the interest for the whole six month. Okay. Simply put, if Adam purchased the bond on July 1st, well, if Adam purchased the bond on July 1st, it's going to be 600,000 times 0 0.045. Why 0 0.045? The bond pays interest at 9%. We're doing it for, we're computing the amount for six months. It will be 27,000. And the answer is 27,000. If, if, if 
Adam purchased the bond on July 1st at face value. So that's not the case here. But now we know the total interest for this period, cash interest, is 27000 Now remember, Adam purchased the bond on November 1st. So that's the total amount. Actually, that's the total amount of cash Adam would receive because when Adam on December 31st, the issuing company, whatever that issuing company is, will pay will pay 27 Maggie will pay will pay Adam $27,000 in cash. But is this going to be the interest revenue? And the answer is no. Why? Here's why. First of all, Adam purchased the bond on November 1st. On November 1st. What does that mean? It means part of this cash interest that 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 Adam received should not be interest revenue. Why not? Because someone else held the bond for July, August, September, and October. So someone held the bond for four months. What does that mean? It means Adam will have to back out. Although Adam received $27,000 in cash, Adam will have to back out the accrued, the interest that was accrued that someone else will need to record that revenue on their income statement. So simply put, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take 27,000 and divide 27,000 by six months. So we're gonna take 27 and divide 27,000 by six months. So let's go ahead and see how much interest per month, 27 divided by six. So per month, it's 4,500. Now, Adam did not own the month, did not own the bond, July, August, September, and October. So if we multiply this by four, that's going to give us 18,000. So this 18,000 is simply the accrued interest. Now, when Adam purchased this bond, Adam only paid 15. You might be saying, why? Wait, maybe the seller was so desperate, they said, okay, I will forgive a one month worth of bond for you. It doesn't matter. Adam held the bond for two months. Therefore, Adam will need to deduct 18,000 from the cash in terms of revenue. Although Adam received 27,000, 18,000 of it is not really interest. So what Adam left with is $9,000 $9, in interest revenue. Well, we don't have 9,000 as an answer. We are missing one more thing. What are we missing? We are missing the fact that the bond has $60,000 of discount. When you buy the bond at a discount, your interest revenue will be higher than the cash that you received. Although, although you received $27,000 in cash, if you compute the interest revenue, the interest revenue would be higher because you received a discount. Now what's gonna happen? Adam will need to amortize this discount for November and December. For those two months, November and December, this is how much you, you're gonna amortize the discount. Now, how are you gonna amortize the discount? You're gonna be using the straight line method. What does the straight line method mean? It means amortize it equally over the life of the bond. Now we need to know how long is Adam holding the bond? Well, it's gonna go it's gonna go from November 1st, 2014, till the bond mature July 1st, 2021. So let's kind of go real quick and count to see how long will Adam held this bond. For 2014, he's going to have two months. For 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So it's going to have 12 for each. Uh, now, 21, it's going to have six months for 21. We'll count 21 separately. 12, 12, 12, 12. 12. 12, whoops, 12 month for 2020, 12 month for 2020, and for 2021, it's gonna, it's gonna mature in July. So if we're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six, we're gonna have six full years. So let's take six, multiply by 12, that's equal to 72. So those equal to 72 month plus eight, plus eight equal to 80 month. So Adam's gonna have this bond for 80 month, therefore he's gonna, Amortize the bond over 80 months. So 60,000 divided by 80 months, it's going to give Adam per month 750 of discount being amortized. So we're going to now do November and December. We're going to multiply this by two. So in addition to the 9,000, Adam is going to recognize in revenue an additional 1,500 in bond and discount that's going to be turned into revenue. Therefore, after all said and done, the answer is 10,500, the interest revenue that Adam will receive 
that, that Adam would record on the income statement. Once again, real quick, the total amount of cash is 27,000. If he held the bond for six months, well, he did not. We'll have to back out the four months. will keep us with 9,000. Then we have to account for the discount. The discount per month is 750. 750 times two is 1,500. So this is how we will solve this problem. And the answer is 1,500. Now, if you're having any difficulty with these concepts, don't sit for the exam yet. You are not ready. You have to understand how bonds work. And you have to understand how bonds work from the issuer's perspective and from the investor's perspective. In this problem, we looked at the investor's perspective. Now you have to understand how the issuer account for this bond. And this is where I would like to invite you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com, where I cover these topics in details, whether it's from the issuer's perspective or the investor's perspective. Again, if you're taking any of these accounting uh, CPA prep courses, I don't replace them. I wish I can. If I can, I will, I will be charging you more than this nominal amount. $29.99 is nothing based on the value that you will, you will get. Don't shortchange yourself. The CPA is a lifetime investment in your career. Put the exam behind you. Move on so you can succeed in your career. Good luck. And most importantly, stay safe.